This is a tutorial on the Property Showing and Representation Agreement, CAR Form PSRA, not to be confused with the Buyer Representation Agreement, which is the BRBC. This is a shorter form, it's only three pages, whereas the Buyer Representation Agreement is five pages. Actually, it's 13 pages if you count all the advisories and disclosures that are bundled with it. This is meant to be used on a more casual basis, maybe a spur of the moment showing. It's three pages, very simple to fill out. And it says here, for use with a prospective buyer for up to three open house or other properties only. Now, this is not binding. I mean, you're not limited to three. It's just saying it's intended to be used for up to three. Likely because if you're, doing, if you're showing more than three properties, you really should engage in a more comprehensive buyer broker agreement the BRBC. This I think is intended more of a spur of the moment phone call for requesting a showing or escorting a buyer to an open house. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put in the date that you prepare the form, the name of the clients, your brokerage name, then you're going to list the open houses or properties. And this is actually similar to a proprietary showing agreement that I've had at my company for years, which basically said, it's a one page form, which basically says, listen, you don't have to use me as your exclusive agent, but if you're asking me to go and tour properties with you or open up properties, well, on those particular properties in which I'm doing work, I'm going to represent you. I'm your representative on those. I don't care about what you do with other agents, other properties, but these where you're asking me to show up, these I will represent you. And that's what's happening here. You're making a list. Now, I don't like that it's limited to three. I get why, but a workaround is something that you could put in here. So you're gonna list the properties here. Now, just to be clear, do not go in a property with a client without using either this form or the other form or some representation agreement because the requirement is, now this is beginning August 17th, if you're a realtor, prior to touring, prior to accessing a property with the client, you must have a representation agreement. So if you get a call from a buyer and they say, hey, you know, I just saw this house, it's down the street, can you open it up for me? I'm not working with an agent. You know, I don't wanna do anything formal, I don't wanna to commit to one. You can say yes, but please understand that as a professional realtor, I'm required to have a, an agreement in writing. This is a requirement. It's not my choice. It's just how the industry works after the settlement. I mean, I don't know how far you want to go into a backstory, but you can just tell them, look, it's a requirement. And you can bring this form at the very least and say, look, this just says on these properties, I'm your agent. That's it. It doesn't, it doesn't require you to do anything else or use me in the future if you're looking at other properties. But on these, I must have this signed. Now, let's say you have a, a, a client that wants to see four properties. Well, you could always create a, a, a list on a separate exhibit. I put exhibit A, and exhibit A is just a Word document that you just write exhibit A on the top, write the four properties on there or five properties or whatever you're showing if it doesn't fit here, and then have the buyer initial that or sign that page to acknowledge that it's part of this. But ideally, you'll have three that'll go on here sure some agent out there is going to smush more than three in this area and that's sloppy but it'll still work it'll still get the job done not recommended because it's sloppy try to do a separate item but if you do that separate list like an exhibit don't forget to have the buyer sign or initial it all right so we move past this part and this just basically outlines responsibilities and expectations that broker is going to show the property right to represent on the on the aforementioned properties now down here, it gives a max of a 30-day representation period. Again, this is a this is a the the light version of the representation agreement, which has the I believe it's 90 days, or three months there, right? Not not very precise, but uh, so here they have 30 days, and then it says broker compensation. You'll write in two and a half percent, and then you can explain this section as a way to alleviate concerns from a buyer and say, look. Just to let you know, I might get paid from the seller or the listing broker. I mean, that's going to be less common as we uh, move further past August 17th, but that can happen, especially in this transitionary period. But basically, you can tell them if the seller pays you, it offsets your obligation. 
And if I get two and a half percent from the seller, and we can even ask for that in the offer, it'll be subtracted from this number to a point where you may owe me zero. So that might offset a little bit of the uh, concern that a, a client may have. Cancellation right now, because it's not exclusive, effective immediately, someone can cancel this. You can put a delay there if you want. Other terms, if you need to, write something in. And this talks about compensation, broker involvement. Your both you and your your client are going to initial payment through escrow. I mean, th this stuff you can just skim through. Now down here, I will draw your attention to this because it's saying uh, prospective buyers attending an open house. And it's telling the buyer, you're not required to sign this to see this property in an open house. A buyer might say that to you as an agent. I just want to see an open house. That's fine. Your answer as an agent should be, if you want a representative to accompany you to an open house, that representative, that realtor, must have a representation agreement signed. So, of course, a buyer is not required to sign any document to see an open house. But... If they want to have an agent involved, then they must sign it. So it's their choice. I mean, you as the agent should not accompany a buyer into a property unless they have signed one of these documents. And it just tells them also, hey, if you've signed one of these representation agreements with someone else, um, you know, disclose so there's not a conflict of interest an issue because there will be procuring cause issues coming up with um, uh, let's call them polyamorous buyers that are engaged in uh, multiple relationships with multiple agents at the same time. All right. And then we have uh, buyers going to sign. You're going to put your info and it's done. That's it. I mean, this is more of a two page form because that third page is just a signature and it's that simple. So you're going to use this or the representation agreement, but just consider this the watered down light version of the BRBC. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you.